Okay, so this time what I want to do is tell you about monads in the language of string diagrams. And then hopefully, if I've got time, we'll see how you get monads from a junctions via string diagrams. And then that's where things really kick off. You see, that's, I mean, that's where I really understood what monads and adjunctions were, was when someone showed me the string diagram notation and things just clicked for me. So it's not necessarily the notation for everyone, but it's certainly the notation for me. So let's just crack on and have a look at monads. So recall that we have a monad is uh, if we have a functor t from c to c together with two natural transformations. We've got mu, the product or multiplication, natural transformation from t squared to t, and eta, which is the unit, which is natural transformation from the identity on c to uh, t. And it has to satisfy well, these have to satisfy two relations, and these two relations are, I guess, tri triangle equalities. So not triangle inequalities this time, as I was so uh, fervently saying last time. And also this associativity. So we'll see these, these unital things and these, this associativity square in terms of the string diagram. So, what have we got? So we're trying to lay this into string diagrams. So we've got a functor t, and we've got two natural transformations. So let's just write these two natural transformations down. And I realized I've not been terribly clever with my board space here. Uh, I should have pushed that a little bit down. So, so let's just be stupid and draw these two natural transformations in the gap here. OK, so we've got a natural transformation from t squared to t, which we're going to call mu. So we have draw a little box here. So mu, we're going to draw as a little thing like that. It goes from t, 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 t to t. So again, as this is the only sort of trivalent little flob we get, it's often just erase the mu. It, it's usually clear from the, in the context. So whenever I see that, that's my, that's my product. So this is a natural transformation mu and my eta, so what's eta? Eta goes from the identity functor to t, so I'm just going to draw this little ball here. So remember, identity functor, we just draw as nothing, there's just nothing there. You can draw this little dotted line if you, if you want, but it's not really worth it. Um, and that's it for t. And Everywhere kicking around. The only category inside here is C, so I won't bother writing these, these on. But you can put those on if you if you're worried at this at this point. As soon as you get you know, fast at these things, you'll just ignore those. Right. So let's have a look at this picture here. So what's this say? So let's just take this left-hand triangle here first. And again, it's the it's saying that two natural transformations are equal. If we do this one. Uh, or we do this one, we've got to get the same answer. So the first one, it says we start. Let's draw it up here. So we start at t. Uh, we do, we just do t, but we apply eta. So we, we have to do one of those on the right. So we have a little eta. So that's the first. That's the first natural transformation. And then we have to do mu. So we have to multiply these two together. So we just draw. And that has to equal the identity natural transformation on the T. So we get every, everything inside is, is a T, so I don't really have to label things. So that is equal to to just do nothing. So what it's saying is you can absorb a little blob into the light. So if you have a little blob floating around, you can just get sucked in. Or you can spontaneously just uh, have one just hanging down there. Uh, so it's a sort of a topological move for me, a topologist. That's that's a sort of a nice, nice relation to have. And the one on the other side. So we're doing pretty much the same thing. We start with t, but we introduce the eta on the left this time instead of the right. So this is saying we do we start with a t, and then we just introduce an eta. So that's this is just eta t. The first bit, and then coming down, we're on t, so we've got t and t, and we just Smash them together and end up with that. So that has to be equal to 
Now, I don't know about you, I find that far easier to remember than that. But I, I'm sort of just visual, I guess. Uh, so, let's have a look at the associativity thing, which seems to be not complicated, but again, something quite straightforward. So we've got the equality of two natural transformations. We either go around the square at the dot or along the bottom there. So always start off with three copies of T. So we go from T, T, T. And what do we do? So we just do nothing to the one on the left. So I'm going to cross the top here first. And we just multiply the, the two on the right together. That. And then what do we do? Uh, we just multiply the two things. Okay. And the alternative was to multiply the two things on the left first, uh, just to go to t squared. So we've got two copies of t now as we're going up. So it just says these two things uh, have to be equal as natural transformations. So again, I can put t's on everywhere. But you understand that there's t's everywhere here. So this is just associativity. I mean, this is just saying if you're multiplying the two things there and then multiply the result with the other one, it's the same as multiplying the two things and then coming in from the right and multiplying the other one. So in our string diagram language, a monad is just some t, so I guess we could just we should just say we've got t like this together with these two natural transformations and these nice, easy to remember graphical um, identities that are satisfied. Okay. So if anyone's, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the language of sort of monoidal categories um, and has seen these sorts of pictures in monoidal categories. These are sort of the pictures for a monoid in a monoidal category. And there's, there's a lot of similarities. Well, that's because we're working here with functors and natural transformations, categories, functors and natural transformations. And that's a strict two category. And, and we using this notation in there. Or we could have uh, sort of talked about monoidal categories, which is something completely different, seemingly. But these are both examples of some, something up here, which is the idea of a, a weak two category. So the string diagrams sort of naturally live in uh, the natural notation for weak two categories and monoidal categories and strict two categories, of which the two categories of categories which we're dealing with here are both examples. So it is the same sort of language you might have seen before. Now, even if you haven't seen it with monoidal categories before, you've probably heard of Feynman diagrams. And these might look like Feynman diagrams to some of you. Well, that's because that's the stuff that's going on in monoidal categories. I mean, that is what Feynman was talking about, certain uh, diagrams representing morphisms in monoidal categories. So that's really where the genesis of these things come from. So I've sort of waffled here a bit at the end. Now, as I said, uh, I wanted to get onto the junctions this time, but I, I've run out of time. Uh, but we'll see. What, I, what I'll do for you is I'll show you how we can get from an junction to a monad very quickly using this language.